Hi, I'm Kit and I'm a native bee scientist. Today I'm here in the city of Kalamunda in a patch of bushland right in the burbs. So when people think of bees, they usually think of the yellow and black bees, Apis mellifera, the European honeybee. This is actually an introduced species to Australia. In Australia though, we have over 2,000 species of native bees and they come in a whole array of colours, patterns and sizes. They range from little bees, just over two millimetres long, the Euryglossinae, up to larger bees, the Amagilla. Some bees are black and blue, other ones are bright yellow. And then we've got mega chili bees with red bums and red fuzzy heads. There's even a species of native bee that's named after Calamanda, Hylaeus rufuseps calamandae, is a species of Hylaean bee that comes from here in this region. Native bees are really important to the city of Kalamunda because they're part of the ecosystem. They contribute to the amazing biodiversity and they're pollinators. So many of the flora in Kalamunda rely on bees to visit them and pollinate them. Without the bees, we wouldn't have many of the beautiful wildflowers that are all throughout the city. We estimate there are about 800 native bees in WA, but this is just an estimate. There are so many places that we haven't surveyed for native bees, and there are actually so many native bees that have been collected but not described. I've only just begun to start to document the bee biodiversity in Kalamunda, and already I've found that there's an incredible diversity. In just two months, I found Euryglossinae, Hylaeus, Megachili, Leoproctus, such an amazing array of genera and over 20 species and this is just through two surveys. I can't wait to find what else I'm going to discover in the warmer summer months. Today we're in Poison Gully in High Wycombe in a patch of bushland right across from houses in suburbia. Now this has been one of my study sites and I've found many bees here. The thing is you don't have to be in a remote area in the wilderness to find native bees. They are here in the burbs. It's just about knowing what to look for and what plants that they like. So this is where the mega chili bees nest in nature, in little holes in wood created by wood boring beetles. And you can tell when they've been nesting here because they will seal the holes up with resin, with bits of sand, or with chewed up leaves. We can encourage native bees in urban areas by providing them with the food and nesting resources that they need. So firstly, native bees need nectar and pollen for food. Unlike the European honeybee, which isn't very fussy, some of our native bees are very specialised. They've co-evolved with the native flora, so if we want to encourage native bees in the burbs, it's best to choose native flowers. Secondly, native bees need places to nest. The majority of native bees nest in the ground, so we can help them out by making sure that there's patches of bare ground for them to nest in. Sandy soils, not covered with mulch, and certainly not fake grass. Now the rest of the native bees, in nature they nest in little holes in wood created by wood boring beetles. We can help them out firstly by not clearing trees, but we can also help them out by making their own bee hotels. It's so easy to make a bee hotel. You just need bamboo canes, wood and some drills. And drill the holes between three millimeters and 10 millimeters. As you can see, this bee hotel has been used by a bee, by the caps, the sealed nests. It's been used by a species called Megachili orifrons. This is one of my favorite bees and it's the one that you might see using your bee hotels too. It's got bright red eyes. Everyone can help out native bees in the burbs by planting the right kinds of flowers and putting up bee hotels. You can also be involved by becoming a citizen scientist. If you see native bees and want to learn more, contact the City of Kalamunda.